negative it's uh, indicate it if, if if it is negative it indicate that a uh, move back towards equilibrium is the positive it's away from equilibrium the coefficient of the error correction term is 0 and 1 0 suggesting no adjustment one time period one indicate full adjustment then the error correction value should lie 0 to 1 like that is the error correction term this example shows the error correction model Uh, within brackets, it shows the uh, residual from the co-integration relationships. The error correction term has a T-statistics, uh, which is highly significant, supported to the co-integration results. This is the co-integration term error to error correction 0.32 the coefficient 0.32 that means 32 percent movement back towards equilibrium following a shock to the model it is minus or it is negative right that's one thing we discuss error correction other things are potential problems with point integration the augmented dickey fuller test adf means augmented dickey fuller test indicate acceptance of the null hypothesis when in fact point integration is present the augmented dickey fuller test is the best when we have a lot time span of data. The multivariate approach of co-integration, the different approach for testing co-integration is generally required when we have more than two endogenous variables in the model, then we use the multivariate approach of Co-integration. Uh, those are the steps in testing the co-integration. Uh, first, uh, we test all the variables to determine if they are integrated in the same order. I O means integrated of levels integrated i within brackets one it integrate integrated in order one integrate i2 means integrated in order two using the augmented decupular test if both variables are integrated in the same order then we carry out the co-integration if there is evidence of co-integration then the use of residual to the from the error correction term in the corresponding error correction mod. If there is an evidence of co-integration, then the use uh, of residual to residual to from the error correction term in the corresponding error correction model. At the number of lag for both explanatory and explanatory and deep, uh, uh, dependent variables to the error correction model. Omit those lags that are insignificant to form a parsimonious model. Then we use the error correction model for dynamic forecasting of the dependent variables and assess the accuracy of the forecast. Right, this is the steps we do for testing the point integration. Uh, 
simultaneous equation when we run the regression using OLS we assume the explanatory variables are exogenous. If the explanatory variables are endogenous the estimate produced by OLS are biased. This means estimator is not best blue that means best linear and unbiased. Therefore T and F statistics are not valid. This is known as simultaneous equation bias. The potential problem occur here is when they deciding which variables are exogenous. What are the measures to overcome the biases? One way to overcome this bias is to form a reduced form equations in which we rearrange our model by a process of substitutions until all explanatory variables are exogenous. Another methods involve using instrumental variable technique. Finding exogenous variables to act as instrument for the endogenous variables. A popular way to overcome the problem in the finance literature is to estimate the system of equation that is vector auto regression. In economics or in finance literature, we can overcome this bias. Uh, by using vector autoregression model. This reduced form, form equations right all I explained here into instrumental variables Uh, year two stage list square. This we discuss uh, one way in finance literature. One way to omit these biases, we use vector auto regressive approach to overcome the endogenous uh, variable problem of endogenous variables one way around the problem is to estimate the system of equations all equations are identified then we exclude all level of variables as explanatory variables then each variable is acting as a dependent variable The lag variables are also predetermined. These are the exogenous variables. Uh, when specifying the vector to regression, it is important to decide the how many lags we need to include. Right? If we have two variables, all these two variables act as a dependent variable. Right, so uh, uh, main uses of vector autoregressions, this model is often used to link different markets such as the bond market and stock market. Uh, main why is used for testing the causality between uh, the variables. If we want to test the causality between variables, we use VAR. The main use is forecasting. Uh, if you want to forecast the future, uh, VAR is used because it is the dynamic nature of the model. When the VAR is adapted slightly, it can be turned into the vector correction model. 
then this can be used for assessing the long run and short run relationships in the one we have discussed vector error correction and the then vector auto regression right now it is clear for you why we are using vector auto regression vector to regression is used because variables act as the exogenous and endogenous in the simultaneous equation issue with the simultaneous equation problem we can't use the uh, oils model then in finance literature we use instead of uh, mainly vector to regression the important the advantages of vector to regressions are uh, it is also uh, used to link different markets bond market and stock market it is uh, is used for because test in the causality between the variables for forecasting we use vector to regression uh, and when vector auto regression is adopted we can use the uh, vector error correction model for testing the short run and long run relations the causality is another topic uh, we have discussed uh, the regression doesn't imply causality so then to test uh, for causality a lag model need to be tested used the range of causality is the main approach for testing the causality in general the term causality is not used instead it is that granger cause a granger causes b the granger causality test can be used to determine if the variables is exogenous or not if the variables are exogenous or not granger's causality test can be used to test for granger causality between two variables simply run the following var model rt depends on uh, its past value and the its uh, is is the dependent variable independent variable that effect to the r it is the lag value of it st also again act as the dependent variable this is the granger causality value the to determine if there is any evidence of causality from s and r right there are our variable s and r uh, if we conduct if test for joint significance of the lag explanatory variable if joint is uh, jointly significantly different to zero then causality run from s to r that means uh, causality are there any evidence of causality from s to r we conduct a test it is joint significant of the lag explanatory variables if jointly significantly from zero then causality run from s to r the same process is carried out to other equation also s causes r if we carry out a test for both equation and it appear s causes r and r causes s then we have by causality causality run in both di directions uh, many argue this suggest an invalid relationship between the variables here yeah, vector to correction model why we are using vector error correction model why we are using vector auto regression why we are using granger causality 
in sum simultaneous simultaneous equation bias is a serious problem in economic modeling so we can an extent to overcome the problem by using reduced form equation approach assume mean the equation is identified exactly reduced form equation approach we assume the equation correctly uh, the further way around the problem is to use a var where all explanatory variables are lacked therefore predetermined all explanatory variables are lacked in this equation 1 s is all the lack explanatory variable r is the explanatory variable for x it is also the lack here r uh, lack of r and s lack of s assignment uh covering the topics which uh, topics which i have discussed uh during last 10 lecture series first uh multiple running a multiple regression and we discussed the properties of the multiple regression uh and we interpret the multiple regression we check the model efficiency model efficiency by using uh under model efficiency we check um autocorrelation heteroscedasticity uh, normality right so and the multicollinearity later we discuss the time series data analysis cannot be uh, discuss the time series data analysis because most of the finance uh, data and economics data are time series when economics and one problem in economics and finance data are simultaneous bias due to the simultaneous bias we can't use the normal uh, regression model then we use vector auto regression model and also another property of the time series data is uh, data are non stationary if the data is not non stationary we cannot use the standard um, normal regression analysis for interpreting the our uh, for analyzing the data then we discuss the for stationarity then we discuss the topic called co integration then we discuss the topic error correction model when we discuss the topic vector auto regression right covering these few topics uh, i design uh, this uh, assignment and with the data if you you have your own data test uh, your data as well but for the assignment purpose use in you know, the uploaded data which i have uploaded to this uh, lms following the data set analyze uh and interpret the results this is the assignment uh for this 
cover in this talk uh, this lecture series lecture uh, lecture topics Right, these are the uh, assignment one data set, and these are the assign. This is the assignment two. Uh, same assignment. There are two data set. Very simple data set, and analyze the data. Right, you have to upload the data set. How to upload the data set to the eViews? By right, this assignment, uh, you will have to submit within a couple of weeks. Right, uh, the late assignments, uh, late submissions are not accepted. So then briefly I explain how to do this. Here first, how to the, I upload the data set as an Excel word, uh, Excel word, uh, Excel file. Uh, import data to the Excel file. What first, what you need to do is file, create a new work file, file, new then click work file this is quarterly data here 2008 quarter 1 to 2017 quarter uh, 4 is forecasted data It is 2008 Q1 and 2017 Q4. Then click OK. Then go to the file. Then open foreign data as work file. Foreign data as work file. then you can open the data file select in the cell range it is predefined range then select custom range when custom range in the sheet is our uh, our file name sort we don't uh, need our first column date 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 and the year we keep only uh, two variable columns right when there is arrow button when select the right arrow and the left arrow when select the uh, uh, right arrow so you we can remove the our year year column when you know that uh, remove the when you press the left button, we can add it. Keep all the variables except the date. Our variables are the IP and uh, CSI. Those are the two variables. Right? You exclude the uh, date file, date column. Then go to the next. Then go to the next. Then here again, basic structure, it is regular frequency, quarterly data, 2008 Q1. When you type the 2008 Q1, 
it comes the first column at the system at the first column that's why you remove the date column keep uh, all the variable columns then system will take the uh, year column then finish now those are the data uh, csi and ip so then what is uh, after uploading your data file then check if the time series data are stationary to check that to check whether series are stationary first graph the data first graph go to the quick oh we we graph line no for the quick quick and graph quick graph then variables are c s i and i p those are the variables then click okay then the graph type is basic line graph and the line and symbol select multiple graph from here select multiple graph then click okay right this is the plot the data create a time plot so then can you distinguish how do you interpret how do you interpret a trend right we have discussed in the previous lecture series there are two types of trend we discuss then after uh, plotting the data using a graph then interpret what is the trend you can see right this is the first interpret the uh, <coughs> graph then then check this is a formal test for testing the stationarity is unit root go to the quick go to the quick series statistics unit root test go to the csi first go to the augmented dicky fuller test go to the levels first check trend and intercept in the plus series we can see the trend and intercept uh, automatic selection it is keep default and then click ok then we can see that our data series are not stationary then what is our null hypothesis is unit root null hypothesis csi has a unit root then means non station csi has a unit root and then csi has not unit root means stationary then we reject because our probability value 0.9765 it is less than 5% it is less than 5% means it is less than 5% means we can confirm that csi has a unit root then go to the view unit root then go to the first difference 
click OK. In the first difference, series has a unit are stationary. In the level series are stationary. Same thing you can do for the other variables. So then cut, you know, that this data to the word file. Type your uh, type uh, the what is null hypothesis, whether what is an alternative hypothesis, but null hypothesis is mentioned that CSI D within bracket CSI, this variable name has a unit root, right? It is reject because the probability value is 0 0.001. It is less than 5%. Then we accept our alternative hypothesis. Same thing. Unit root for our next variable I2. Press go to the levels, then click OK. See the probability value. Probability value is 0 0.2248. Then IP has a unit root. Because probability value 0 0.2248, it is less than 5, it is greater than 5% we reject our alternative hypothesis. That means we accept this. The series IP is stationary, non-stationary at levels. Then go to the wheel, the unit root test, then go to select press difference, then C. It is also non-stationary at the first difference. Then go to the second difference. Second difference, it's okay. It is trend stationary. I can't remember that it is trend stationary. Graph. Uh, our data is CSI and quick graph. I pick. we can see the trend but here we can see the here we can see just trend then uh, go to the series statistics unit to test levels trend If we select only trend, the first different series are stationary. But this is the is the time series CSI stationary. So then you asked only to do the CSI. Make the correlogram, then go to the file, your correlogram. Right, this is the correlogram table. 
is a partial correlogram and the autocorrelation then AC and the PAC. Correlogram CSI levers. This is a correlogram for the levers. How do you interpret the correlogram table? Right, interpret the correlogram table with the unit truth test. That is the uh, that is the, uh, in the assignment, question number part one shows this. You need to interject the uh, stationarity by using a graph, by using a unit root, and then by using the correlogram and interpret each variable. You have passed a uh, um, question paper uh, based on this output. Right, now what you need to do is second, part two, create the difference variable. Now all these are variables that are as it is. Now create the difference variable DCSI, D means difference, CSI means variable name. By using the generate command, but here there is a command generate, G E N. G E N R here. Then D cover variable D C S I. Right, this is the variable height. We want to create a new variable. Convert the data series as a plus difference. D C S I. Then how to write D within bracket variable name. Then click OK. Then check DCSI variable. It is plus difference. Right? Automatically it comes the don't no need to um, convert uh, the plus difference by using manually but automatically it generate. Now check unit Levels. First difference series as unit root. Not unit root, the first difference series are station. Right? Now you know that check the stationary by for this variable. Now plot it. Plot view. Graph. Right. right, this is the graph. Then you can see that most of the data lies between 2 and minus 2. Then check the correlogram. The correlogram. This is the correlogram. Now you can see the probability value. Of which compare the probability value of before difference and after difference. Right, 
and do the same to the next variable our industri industrial production index do the same for the industrial production index variable as say right do the same process for the industrial production for uh, variable ip variable then go to the fourth part of the assignment <clears throat> fourth part estimate equation Again, we need to generate the variable IP as a log DIP equal D IP. Then, in this uh, fourth uh, part of the assignment, it mentioned that D log IP. Then, you need to generate a variable D. IP IP equal the the quick estimate equation and type IP the dependent variable C is the constant and D as a independent variable and then click OK Is I. This is the uh, 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 this is the data output. Now interpret. Now you can see the R square. Go to the R square trust. R square is four percent. Uh, F statistics shows that it is less than greater than five percent. F statistics. It is greater than five percent. That means uh, our model overall model is not significant. But individual variables D C S I is in significant variable. In the Durbin Watson stat shows that there is an auto correlation issue because Durbin Watson statistics it is less than. Uh, it is less than two. And interpret the results based on R, based on F, based on autocorrelation. Also, you can uh, check residual diagnostics, correlogram, Q statistics. There is a correlogram test, probability values. We can see that most uh, away these lines, these boxes go away from this line. Also, the probability value it is zero. It should be this probability value should be greater than five percent. Also, there is an another. Uh, residual diagnostic serial correlation LM test. There is a serial correlation because the probability value is 0 0.00. There is model is suffer from serial correlation. 
then go to the heterocedasticity. Uh, there is no heterocedasticity issue. Main issue in this model is uh, autocorrelation problem. Or go to the normality test. It is no, there is a normality issues as said. Right by using this uh, information, residual test answer for the question number four. Then the estimate the equation adding uh, adding the adding the leg values as mentioned in uh, the in the part uh, number five in the assignment. Here, go to the quick estimate equation. Well, C I leg value then minus one. Leg value we include minus one. That means minus within bracket minus one mean the variables first leg of the variable. Minus two means a second leg of the variable. Right, this is then output. Then interpret the same by using by using the same properties auto for R squared probability of statistics and the Derby Watson statistics also in the correlogram and uh, correlogram and normality and serial correlation. Then then next model <coughs> IP is I P is I minus one, that means leg one, eight minus two, that means two legs, I that uh, minus three means third leg. And DZ minus four fourth leg. Right now, see what will happen if we add more variables, more legs. Then what will happen? Compare what will happen to the R square. What happened to the probability of statistics? what it happened to the Derby Watson statistics and also the correlogram right here go to the residual statistics correlogram q stat uh, serial correlation LM test do both test and interpret your result right that is the part five uh, for Number five in the assignment. Then check the Granger causality. Then do the Granger causality. Go to the quick. Group statistics, but here different. Uh, in the assignment, I mentioned that in the EV seven, but it is EV nine. Uh, some <coughs> the months 
a big change. But uh, it's a brain job, uh, both the quick and group statistics and then brain job causality test. Then the variables. and DIP. These two. And open the variable, open all variables. Then range of concept. If the statistics shows VIP does not range a cause DCSI DCSI does not range a cause DI if probability if statistics these are less than greater than 5% then we reject these two The null hypothesis the uh, IP does not range across DC is I. We accept this because the probability value is greater than 5%. We accept this because probability value is greater than 5%. Then, are both variables are co-integrated? Are all these variables are co-integrated? Then go to the uh, here D and P open as a group. Then view co-integration test to the Johansson system co-integration test. But in the model, it shows that there is a two-co-integration effect. Both they are co-integrated. If the co there is a co-integrated, then the model, we can use vector error correction model. Here we estimate, then you are asked to carry out the VAR model unrestricted bar IP and DC those are the variables then click OK this is our the vector uh, auto regression model then all roots graph, all roots lie inside and uh, This is the vector auto regression estimate. Right, interpret uh, the vector auto regression model. Here you can use the impulse response functions. Also, you can use various decomposition tables. You can interpret the results. Then you can test uh, the vector error correction model. It is the IP and the C is 
is set. This is our vector error correction model. And go to the quick, go to the proc, make system, order by variable. Copy. Estimate equation. Then this is our vector error, error correction term. It is negative. Those are the vector error correction results. Right, interpret these results. If you did do this assignment means you cover the topic I have discussed from the beginning. Then there are two, uh, another data set and do the same. The your exam question paper uh, related to this topic are based on uh, this analysis. Right, run, do the same for the uh, as an assignment and it is much more helpful for you for answer uh, your question final in semester examination paper as well. Then do the uh, do this uh, assignment as much as you can and interpret all the results, right? That means you can get a good knowledge uh, of the topics uh, which I have discussed during last few weeks. That means uh, what is stationary, right? What is point integration, right? What is um, uh, vector autoregression? and what is vector error correction model and how to interpret these data. Now, in addition to that, I would like to uh, upload, your, upload the assignment within a couple of weeks. Upload the assignment within a couple of weeks and it is very helpful for you for the final exam as well. Now, in addition to this uh, final uh, assignment, I would like to discuss some test questions as well. Right, those I know that some few test questions. In addition to that, right? So then in, uh, do the assignment and practice this uh, sample question. This is adding, uh, this is an extra one here. Do the assignment one. And first question. If I ask, why are the panel data forms? We discuss the different types of data at the beginning. At the beginning, we discuss there are different types of uh, data, types of data, uh, cross-sectional data, time series data, and panel data. Why the panel data are useful in financial uh, database models? I have not discussed the panel data analysis next couple of uh, next uh, lecture series uh, you can follow the panel data analysis
That answer is financial data, although usually plentiful in same form of, can be limited in numbers of observations. The main problem with observation arise, arises with accounting data, balance sheet data, which is often only produced annually. In many countries, this accounting data has only become available recently, and even in developed countries, changes in the accounting rules means that data can only be used relatively recently. The main way of overcoming this problem is to use a panel, which comprise both cross-sectional and time series data. In my lecture series, I explain how to analyze the cross-sectional data series. The cross-sectional data series we can analyze by using a regression model or the reduced form regression model, checking the model efficiency. In the first part of the lectures series, I ex explain how to analyze the cross-sectional data set. Then later we discuss the time series data analysis, uh, starting from the stationarity, then point integration, then vector error correction model, and the vector to regression model. But <clears throat> in panel data, means it consists of both. For example, if there are 10 years of annual data in 20 companies, this would produce then 200 observations. With other type of data, financial data can suffer from unobserved heterogeneity in cross-sectional form. The use of panel allows this to be overcome using fixed or random effect approach. Now, this is, this is uh, very important for you to know that in which occasion, which occasion, which situation we use cross-sectional data, in which uh, which situation we use time series data, in which situation we use panel data. Then this is the answer for you for the first question. Then <clears throat> what is the consequence of using non-stationary data in level forms? In level form means when the data as it is. Right. What are the consequences? Why we cannot choose? Why we cannot directly apply non-stationary data? Uh, you cannot use the non-stationary data. If the non-stationary data are used in level forms, a phenomenon known as spurious regressions may result. This will not cause the coefficient to be estimated wrongly, they, are, they will be unbiased. So, it will not be a consequence. But the problem will arise with the measured strength of the relationship and the standard error of estimate. For example, if X and Y are completely independent non-stationary series assume x variable and the y variable those are non-stationary. The regression of y on x could lead to spuriously high r squared. It will get high r squared and the actual distribution of the test statistics will be much flatter. Distribution much flatter, it is, it have a flatter tail than the assumed distribution. Normal assumed distribution is T and F distribution. 
but uh, this statistics will be much flatter. It is like to result in invalid inference, a high probability of type 1 error, than the significance level employed. That's why we cannot use non-stationary data. That's why we convert this data to the stationarity and check the point integration and run the model by using vector auto regression. Right. If you have, assume that if that's why I told you, uh, <clears throat> if you have a time series data set, first plot the data and see the see the trend. Here, for example, here personal consumption expenditure and the uh, gross national product variable. Are these series stationary? Are these series? We can see these are trend stationary. Right? If you are given the uh, autocorrelation function and the uh, partial autocorrelation function, you will have to interpret it. Also, the autocorrelation function and partial autocorrelation function. I, if you are doing this assignment and then understand what is autocorrelation function and what is partial autocorrelation function and how to interpret this result. Then if you are given a graph or the partial autocorrelation table or the, uh, or the uh, time series graph, if I ask how to interpret uh, the data, then you will have to under, understand how to uh, interpret the graph, time series graph, uh, autocorrelation function or autocorrelation table. Then <coughs> that is related to the stationarity. Then we discuss formal test for test stationarity is Dickey Fuller test and the Phillips Perron test. What is the main difference between these two tests for augmented Dickey Fuller test and the Pili Perron test? are based on estimation of a single unit root testing equation. Therefore, they are not system methods where several equations are estimated at the same time. Both augmented Dickey Fuller and the Philip Perron test have a unit root under the null hypothesis and thus unit root test rather than the stationarity test. These tests are very similar. Only difference is Philip PP test incorporate an automatic correction for autocorrelated residuals in the test regression. Then the PP test like you have lower power to reject the unit root of null hypothesis in a small sample. Right, that uh, understanding is important why we are using both tests. What is the difference between these two tests? Here, another one how to co integration test, how to test the co integration. We use maximum I, uh, value, eigenvalue, <coughs> co integration vector. If these values should uh, be values are less than the critical value, that means there is no co-integration vectors. Then the what is the autocorrelation function and how can they be used to test for stationarity? Uh, autocorrelation function, here the autocorrelation function 
there is a theoretical question, what is it? Right, autocorrelation function can be used to produce correlogram to determine if the series are stationary or not. A of the autocorrelation function is used to determine the autocorrelation function to check the to check uh, the series are stationary the net the kira bala right make a my formula like a is a match ticker the theoretical part ticker you uh, read and understand the q statistics this is the formula to use the q statistics this is the formula to use another jump box the statistics. Right? But in the when the only difference may in the n plus two. For example, with an example the katinawa, given the following information, calculate the Q statistics and jump box statistics and determine if the variable yt is stationary. Assume that there are 54 observations. Do you know what you know? For the make, what is the, you are given the value, this value also you are given. <coughs> then you will have to calculate the Q statistics and Jan box statistics. So the Q statistics calculate can put us, so then here only N multiplied by this value. N is sample size, you, the, you are given this value. Then here N means 54 multiplied by 0 0.09, then 4.86. Uh, Lang box value, A4 we like it, so then you can see N, N can be in our example, it is 54. It was N plus 2. Again, N means second 54 plus 2, 56, 54 multiplied by 56. Then this value. 54 multiplied by 56 multiplied by this value. Then it is 36.28. The chi square value it is 15.540. It is uh, it is from the table. <coughs> then Q statistics suggest that the series is stationary. Make it it is stationary. It is less than 5% less than chi square value. Now LB suggests that it is non-stationary if the may value is greater than 15.5. The difference is due to the relative small sample size that then the LB this is more likely to accurate. Right? <coughs> The thing is the Derby Watson statistics. The Dobin Watson statistics also used to test the autocorrelation. In the Derby Watson test value, it here 1.22, it is lower value, then we can determine there is an autocorrelation problem. If you are given this type of model, you can cover all these, right? You can cover all these topic. <coughs> then the does this model suffer from serial correlation? The main model like a serious correlation, it can suffer with another. So then you need to test this for Durbin Watson. If the Durbin Watson value vector less than 2, then you can determine the model suffer from series correlation. <clears throat> the R squared, it is 98%. These statistics all are highly significant. Then the model suffer from series correlation. <clears throat> right, this is the answer for this question. Then uh, this is another one. Given two variables, x and y variables are given, <coughs> which are stationary.
type the grand Granger causality for XT and YT. Then Y does not Granger cause X and X does not Granger cause Y. So see the probability values corresponding to the FS statistics. Then what can we see? The null hypothesis associated with the probability value 0 0.0042 is that neither xt minus 1 no, xt minus 2, that means past value, do not provide significantly significant information about yt. Arithika, the null hypothesis associated with probability value is that neither yt or yt minus 1 provide statistically significant information about xt. Then if you are given uh, this type of uh, graphical illustrations, then check the unit root in the variables. We are going to make graph to the value so then you can see the quick look at the graph. C, Y, and W are trended. They are called trend. Trended. So the relevant test is for trend stationarity. When selecting the unit road, it is the select current only whether trend or trend and intercept. Right or not. A quick look at the graph C, Y, and uh, W are trended. So the relevant test is for trend stationist. <coughs> also defined and described what is Dickey Fuller test, why we are using Dickey Fuller test. Also, the define and describe the angle angel Granger co-integration test. Right, those are the summary on the some sample uh, questions for the end semester examination. While doing these uh, sample questions, and practice the assignment. Assignments also the some sort of sample questions for the examination. Then practice the assignment as much as possible while giving the answers for the these uh, questions. Like this, practice all these essays. There are four questions consist of uh, these few topics. Right, or in this uh, assignment, before converting to the difference, convert them uh, to the logarithm form and then convert to the difference. For example, generate uh, log uh, 
positive numbers like convert before or differencing convert them to the natural logarithm first then difference, convert it to the difference. Uh, also, here uh, practice, it is autocorrelation table, it's autocorrelation graph. Right, there are two um, assignment, assignment part, there are two parts, uh, activity one and the activity two. Uh, the data file relevant, uh, relevance to the activity one and activity two are uploaded uh, to the LMS with the assignment. Right, follow these uh, each steps and interpret your results and upload the assignment as, my, as uh, within a couple of weeks. Uh, also practice the discussion questions uh, with, the, with this assignment. Consider these are the sample or the specific, specimen questions for the end semester examinations. Thank you. And if you have any questions relating to the assignment, please uh, uh, please uh, discuss via the discussion forum. I again, you know, that is strongly advise you. Those who are <laughs> who is willing to follow the economic financial economic econometrics for your exam, please upload the assignment within a couple of weeks. Then thank you.